So I'm really curious where we go from here, because it feels like that was sort of the end of an arc. It can't get any worse, right? It can't get any worse than faceless Rob Rice Titan. New beginning. Is that a new flag? Wait. What happened to, uh... Kenny? Oh, this is a flashback. Okay. Da, da, da. We're getting close to the, the controversial mid-season end credits scene. I've heard a lot of good arguments on both sides. I'm leaning towards just watching it, just because it's the original experience, but I haven't quite made up my mind. There's a very high chance that this will all be settled when I just forget that it exists. As Levi might say, no matter what the thinking behind your decision, nobody will know if it's wrong or right until you, you've reached the outcome. You just follow your instincts at the moment. You just trust in life, trust in the universe. Friends! Is this a flashback within a flashback? Uri. Uri. Oh, I see. This is Rob Race and his brother. You can sure talk. Yeah, I feel like Kenny's a survivor. He'll do whatever it takes. Interesting. So one thing I've been curious about recently is why? Why all this memory stuff? Why the control? What are they doing exactly? What are they trying to protect the world from or the people from? And right there, Uri made it a little bit more interesting for me because he's not being framed as somebody who just blindly is following tradition and thinking that he's above everything. The fact that he understands Kenny suggests that there's more to him, that he's a more nuanced thinker, which makes me hope that there's an interesting reason for all this. What's the truth? I don't know. An older question is, who is the enemy really? And, you know, we still don't really know. We don't know the full stakes. Yeah, he's a deep thinker. Yeah, I guess Kenny is also someone who, he's not really bound to tr tradition, right? He's all about survival. It makes sense why they would gravitate towards each other. There's some overlap, I think, between Kenny and Kimberly in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Kenny and Kimberly are not good people, right? They do terrible things. But one thing that I think is actually a good quality in isolation is that they're sort of awake, right? They're not just following the normal flow of life. They've been forced out of it, sort of. Kenny, maybe more by circumstance. Kimberly, it seems by philosophy, but that gives them a strength, a strength of choice, sort of, being self-directed. Kenny has nothing to lose, really. He can put his energy wherever he wants it. And Uri also has a similar kind of freedom because he's the king. He's the king who knows a lot of the truth and has this power. So both of them are in a similar position in that way and are well suited for each other. Even if they come from very different places or have different goals, they have that same awakeness to the world. And of course, as we know from recently, it's not that he's going to fall into subservience. This is another opportunity for him. It's the biggest opportunity maybe he's ever had. He looks very comfortable in this meeting. Is this... Oh my god. Uh, uh, yeah, it looks like it. Is that Levi? <laughs> it's barely recognizable. Wait, okay, so my memory on this is a little bit fuzzy because there's been a lot of details recently, but I think he mentioned that his sister was pregnant, so I guess that was some time ago where he had that conversation with that old man, and that that child was Levi. She didn't give him the last name, Ackerman. This is the beginning of a beautiful <laughs> relationship. <laughs> I feel like he taught him a lot. <laughs> a lot of these characters went to the Yoki school of doing things. Yumi are just paying friendly visits to the church. Kenny just teaching Levi how to be a friendly person. But this is a much deeper relationship than I thought. This is Daddy Kenny, <laughs> basically. From Kenny to Erwin, that's a really interesting... Move. Yeah. I mean, honestly, he did him a great thing. I mean, he saved his life, basically, it seems. Good luck with that. 
I don't know about that. Kenny's just biding his time. Sanus. Got big dreams. Levi was kicking from a young age. This again. It's just all around. It's amazing that so many characters in the show from so many different walks of life all come to the same philosophy that life is just about power. I will say that it makes a lot of sense for Kenny especially to have that viewpoint and Levi for that matter. But Levi hasn't said that, I don't think. His thinking seems to be a little bit less about survival and more about faith. There's something faith-like about Levi's philosophy. I was joking about it early in this video, but maybe I'm misinterpreting it, but I feel like part of Levi's philosophy is you just do what you feel is right in the moment. You kind of let go. And just deeper than that, I just know that Levi values more than power. Just the way he treats people, even if he doesn't show it outwardly. Levi cares about the world. You know, he cares about people. He cares about horses, you know, like it's not just about survival for him. And I think that that's probably Erwin's influence that crystallized that for him. But I think that wouldn't even have worked if that wasn't already there in him to some extent. I'm guessing Levi was always somewhat sensitive, but he was forced to sort of wear this Kenny mask for survival. And that's a real childhood thing, right? Like adopting the, the behavior of others or the behavior you think will best enable your survival in whatever situation you're in. Because I think for almost everyone, it takes a long time, if ever, to develop the strength to shed some of those things that are not really yourself, things that are just, you're just wearing to get by. And my feeling about Levi, even though I can't really justify this, it's just a gut sense, is that Levi actually is now in the process of sort of shedding some of it. He's shedding things kind of quickly. I feel like he's he's really looking. He's looking for something. Levi is the main character, isn't he? <laughs> Through my neural links, I guess. What are you talking about? So on some level, this guy is still alive or still exists because all the people that exist in this lineage have their memories inside of Eren. So I wonder if that's going to be a factor. But also he's talking about how soon humanity will end and they're going to rebuild it into paradise. So maybe it's not just that they're perpetuating this forever. They have a final plan that requires the destruction of the world to build something better. Is it going to be something like God? These anime villains, you know, they always want to build God or build paradise or something. When will they learn? Kenny was a lot more involved than I first thought. Yeah, they do kind of stay alive, right? Yeah, that's Eren, symbol of peace. <laughs> Yeah, they don't seem too pressed. She's going places in this unit. <laughs> this is creepy. Interesting. He has some weird self-loathing. I don't know if it's the god, though. I think it's probably just the people. This is so bizarre. There's like a, a deep pain here. He's looking for salvation, but... That's not gonna be it. But I think what it actually gives him is purpose. Because here's this person who's really capable, obviously. Who's had a terrible life. Who's, you know, been betrayed by the entire world around him, it seems. Except for Uri. Once you're awake like that, right? Once you see your life is being in your own hands and not being dictated by the world or society, what do you focus on? Like, he needs purpose just like anyone else. This episode is just making him look like a lost soul, looking for a way out of this horrible existence, the pain that he's experienced. But even though it's obvious that this is not going to give him what he hopes it will give him, it's something to focus on. It's more than just being this aimless drifter Kenny with nothing to believe in. You know, at least he has a squad and a unit and people and a goal and something he can aspire to. Kenny. And all this is leading up to this choice he's about to make with the Titan Juice. Oh, we get an Ackerman mid-card. Their abilities exceed a common human's. 
That we know. Right, you gotta eat someone, someone intelligent. Well, he's looking for peace, right? Being a titan is not, not peaceful. You do not want to end up like Rob, Rob Ray's titan did. Just blindly following the flow of life. Yeah, Kenny's definitely an outlier. That is a great question, Levi. Thank you. Uncle Kenny. I'm so glad we got to know Kenny in the episode that he died. <laughs> Thank you, Attack on Titan. Thank you. Well, it's weird because for all the terrible things he did, he saved Levi's life, which seems to have been a really great thing for the world. And it's probably no coincidence that that was arguably his most compassionate, least selfish action, at least as far as what we can see. I also feel like he's he's lying a little bit. Like, he cares too. It seems like he also was looking really hard for something to believe in. He's criticizing other people for having faith or needing faith to keep them going. I feel like that's sort of what dr drove his life, is that pursuit. Maybe he never found the thing that ultimately satisfied that desire, but he had that instinct. And so for me, it's sad. It feels sort of like a sour grapes thing where it's regret, you know? He was always outside of life and that maybe was one of his strengths, you know, like he lived free, but he never was able to really connect to things that actually would have been more meaningful, even though he, he tried it. Maybe he, he got close. The closest thing it seemed he had was his, his his friendship, which ultimately wasn't all the way there, and his comrades, which ultimately were, were wiped out for his death. So it's pretty tragic overall. And arguably the best thing he did, and maybe the most meaningful thing he could have connected to, he was actively trying to distance himself from, which was Levi. Very confusing life for Kenny Ackerman. Is this the Historia coronation? Congratulations. People seem to be accepting. Look at all those happy faces. Yeah, that really went a long way, that rushing into battle. <laughs> I guess that was the point, right? It's a very good narrative. Erwin, man, this guy made moves. <laughs> wow. Never would have thought in the beginning that Historia would end up being queen. Oh, is she gonna attack Levi? Oh no. Well, I mean, you can do it, but that's not really the question. Should you do it? Do you really want to do it? Levi? I feel like he won't even care. After all he's been through today. <laughs> oh my god. Did smoke just fly out of her or him? <laughs> yeah, he doesn't care. Ooh. Ooh. Levi. I really feel like something subtle is shifting for him. What the hell happened to Reiner? Not my Reiner. <laughs> he fought the, the monkey titan. It's Ab Guy. Why though? Why? Why? Look at them abs. <laughs> Yep, we're not done yet. <laughs> There's still a lot of stuff that's gonna happen. Okay, so Monkey Titan wants to coordinate. Seems like he just ingratiated himself, so to speak, with Reinhold. Did my boy Reiner dirty. And it's pretty obvious on a general level why they want the coordinate, right? Like, he who controls the coordinate, controls the power of the Titans, and I guess the ability to end the world, whatever that means. Refresh humanity, maybe create the world in the image you want, like they talked about creating paradise. The question is why will the coordinate come to them? What do they have that they will need? Well, the scouts just ended this whole lineage thing, right? And one question I've had recently is why were they doing this? Why were they keeping this progression of kings going and withholding memories? Maybe there's a threat. And maybe now that the lineage has ended, the threat is a greater threat or whatever they're worried about will come true. 
unless they seek something out to prevent it. But what could that be? So yeah, as usual, we get a resolution in a sense with Historia rising to the throne. This arc sort of coming to a close. This was somewhat of an epilogue, right? Like Historia becomes queen. We get the, the backstory on Kenny to make him a sympathetic character as he dies, but then raising more questions, setting up the inevitable re-confrontation between Reiner and Aaron and Ab Monkey Guy. This was a very interesting episode in terms of the timing. Like we got a lot about Kenny, and I'm grateful for it because it was an interesting depiction. And he died, so it feels sort of like, you know, an ode to his character at the very end. But one thing I think it does to enhance the show going forward is that it actually gave me stronger feelings about Levi. And even though it's a very, very short scene and small line at the end where he says, thanks everyone, that's different, right? Am I crazy or is there something shifting in Levi? He's working something out. Something about his interaction with Kenny made him grateful for his life and for the scouts and for their experience. And one idea is just that he's been carrying Kenny, carrying Kenny's essence for a long time, which isn't really him in my opinion and this feels like closure for him in some small way where he can close the door on the, on that chapter of his life so i guess what i'm most curious about is where levi will go from here i have a feeling or a fear i should say that it's not entirely good i mean i think that part of levi's edge is useful because it it helps him survive and i'm sort of worried for him as he gets kinder and softer especially in this show where anything good is followed by punishment i guess the next episode is really in some sense the start of a new arc because we've sort of you know, resolved a lot of things that were going on. So yeah, very excited to see what's next. Can't wait to get Reiner back in my life. <laughs>